welcome to Miss Miss Math Tutorials. In this video, we're going to be talking about solving quadratics by the square root method. So remember, a quadratic is something in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c. That would be a quadratic trinomial. A quadratic is an expression or equation with the power of 2 as the highest exponent. Solving by a square root method, I like to think of it as a shortcut um, to traditional solving, but this only works when b equals 0. So if we come back to this trinomial form, right, so if b was 0, then whatever has the coefficient of just the plain x with the power of 1, it's kind of like it's not there. Right? Like this only works when we have our x squared and then possibly a constant, okay? So essentially how this works is you want to get x alone on one side of the equation. You'll notice in this first one that has already happened, right? I've got x squared completely alone and on the other side of the equation I have 16. So this is a perfect situation where I would want to use the square root method. And basically all the square root method says, and, and we've been doing it quite a bit up to this point already, is that we can get rid of a power of 2 by taking the square root. When I take the square root, it's kind of like crossing out that little 2 and the square root. They both just go away. And all I have left is what was underneath the square root, which would just be x, right? But we know in algebra, I can't just do something to one side. If I'm going to take the square root of the x, I have to do it to the other side as well, right? I've got to do it right here to the 16. Now, I know 16 is a perfect square. But let's say we didn't know that. How could I figure out what the square root of 16 is? Well, on your calculator, you just hit second. And then that little x square button above it is a blue square root symbol. And you can type in what's in there, 16. Now, 16 is a perfect square. Now, if this was a long decimal, we would have to look at doing um, a simplified radical, which I believe we'll have an example with that in a minute. This one's a nice, perfect square. So... I know that the square root of 16 is 4. Now, here's where it gets a little tricky. I know that the square root of 16 is a positive 4, but it could also be a negative 4. And we use this symbol to help notate that. We say x could be positive 4 or negative 4. And so you'll see that little plus or minus 4, positive or negative 4. Four. And you might be thinking, but it wasn't, this didn't say negative 4, right? When we did the square root of 16, it said positive 4. But here's what we have to think about. It is true that 4 times 4 is 16, and that's how we get the positive 4. We know that. But isn't it also true that negative 4 times negative 4 is also positive 16? It is. So we don't know for sure whether this square root of 16 is the positive 4, is this equation, or is this one with the negative 4s. So we have to list both possible answers within our answer. Okay? Um, now some people may want you to, or you may see this written as x equals positive 4 and negative 4, right? You could see it written that way, but I like using this little shorthand positive or negative 4. Um, but either one is totally fine. Let's look at another example. So for this one, um, we've got x squared plus 8 equals 28. Notice my x squared is not alone, right? It's It's got this plus 8 with it. And in order for my square root method to work, I need the x squared totally alone. So I want to subtract 8. I want to move this over. Remember, I can do my inverse operations. If this is plus 8, I can minus 8 to get rid of it because it cancels to 0. But, of course, if I do that to one side, I have to do it to the other. So at this point, I have left this x squared coming down equals 28 minus 8. That's going to be 20. Okay, and finally my x squared is alone. So remember, how do I get rid of that little 2? I need to take the square root. That's going to cancel out 
that little tube, but if I do that to one side, I have to do it to the other as well. So over here, I just have X left, right? Now 20, I could put it in the calculator. I could see, let me see if 20 is a perfect square. We'll just check. And it's not, I get a long decimal. So this is where I'm going to, some, sometimes teachers are okay with you having a decimal as an answer. But usually at this point, particularly if you're in a high school math, they're gonna want a simplified radical answer. Um, so if you're not sure what I talk, what I'm saying when I mentioned simplifying radicals, you definitely wanna check out my simplifying radical video before, um, before you proceed with this video because this next step probably won't make a whole lot of sense if you're not sure about that. But 20 is not a simplified radical. We need to simplify it. So I need to come up with two factors that go into 20. I immediately think of 2 and 10, right? You could have said 5 and 4. Um, 10 breaks down to 2 and 5. Remember, I'm looking for a set of 2 as this is a square root. So I've got one set right there. That's 1, 2 that gets to come out. 5, he doesn't have a partner, so he doesn't get a circle. He gets a box and unfortunately has to stay underneath the radical. Okay, now I've got to be careful here because I don't just want the positive version, right? I want the negative version as well, just like over here. This time it was with a four, just a nice whole number. Now we have a simplified radical. Doesn't matter, we still need the positive or negative. So you may see it written like this. We've got the positive already written and then I'll throw in the negative two square root of five. Or you might see it like this, x equals plus or minus two square root of five, and that's definitely how I prefer to write it. Okay, but either one of these would be perfectly fine. All right, let's look at another example. So for this one, notice um, my x squared is definitely not alone. I'm gonna need to get it alone. Um, and in order to do that, I'm going to first subtract 10 from both sides using my inverse operation here and bring down my 9x squared equals 91 minus 10 that gives me 81 and I'm gonna need to notice how my x squared is almost alone but not quite it still has this 9 tied out front of it and this is 9 times x squared so how do I undo times well I've got to divide so let me divide both sides by 9. And then at this point I just have x squared equals 81 divided by 9 is 9, right? So finally I've got my, I had to do all that work just to get my x squared alone, but now it's alone. So remember, how do I get rid of that little 2? I've got to take the square root to undo the little 2. If I do that to one side, I have to do it to the other. So here I just have x left, x equals, and then square root of nine. Let's see if it's a perfect square or if I'm gonna have to break it down. And hopefully you're thinking, I know that's a perfect square. So it is, it's three, okay? But it's not just positive three. We've gotta say it could be positive three or it could be negative three, right? We've gotta, We've got to um, allow for both possibilities in our answer. In this last example, you'll notice it looks a little different, right? They've given you a binomial squared equals 36. I just, there, there are multiple ways you could go about solving this, of course, as with any of these, but we're specifically targeting the square root method. Um, so what I like about this is this is actually not bad. I just want to get rid of the little two, right? Well, how do I get rid of a little two? Just like over here, we take the square root. Over here, we'll take the square root of the whole binomial. So that gets rid of the little two, and all I have left is x minus seven, right? And I really don't even need the parentheses. I kind of just wrote them out of habit, but I don't even need those at this point. Then I've got my equals, and I can't just do the square root of one side. I've got to do it to both sides. 
So the square root of 36 would be, let's see, square root of 36, and it is a positive or negative 6. You've got in the habit, get in the habit of when we're solving like this, anytime we do the square root, it's a positive 6 or a negative 6. We've got to allow for both solutions. So at this point, I've got two different equations here, right? I've got this x minus 7, and again, I know I wrote parentheses around it. I really didn't need to, so I'm going to rewrite it without the parentheses. I've got this x minus 7 equals positive 6, because that could be one solution. And then I also have an x minus 7 equals negative 6, because that could also be a solution. And I'm going to need to solve both of these to figure out what is x. I'm going to get two different numbers, and that's okay. So for this one, I would want to add 7, right? using my inverse, and I get x equals 6 plus 7, that's going to give me 13, positive 13. And then in this one, I would want to add 7 again, and I get x equals negative 6 plus 7, well that one's going to be a positive 1. So I have two answers, I have x equals 1 and 13. And we usually, this is a solution set, so we would usually put it in the braces like that if we want to be official about it. Here's one for you guys to try. So we've got 2x squared equals 50, and I want you to specifically solve it using the square root method. So remember, get your x squared alone, square, and then take the square root of both sides. I will post the answer in the video description below. This has been Miss Smith's Math Tutorials.